Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. Today's episode, you might laugh a little bit because we're talking about foods that make you poop. But honestly, it's no laughing matter when you haven't gone to the bathroom in like three to four days. So constipation causes bloating, fatigue. It's super uncomfortable. You're probably not likely, want. you're not going to want to do your workout. If you do do your workout, it's not going to feel very good. You're going to be moody and you're not going to, you're going to be hungry, but not be able to eat because there's just food there and you feel stuck and you just kind of feel gross because you can't unbuckle, you can't button your pants and the scale's up and you're like, why is this happening? And it's really frustrating and really confusing. And to be honest, I'm I hear, sorry if it's TMI, but this episode's a little TMI, but I'm a pretty normal bowel movement person. I would say I go um, at least once a day, sometimes twice a day, and sometimes every other day. It depends on, you know, if I maybe depending on my diet or whatever. But I would say I'm a regular person. Now, you might not be regular. Um, however, I will say some people go every two to three days and they're completely fine. They say they have no problems and no issues. And, you know, if that's normal for you, that's normal for you, that's great. This episode is more for that person that can go a week without having a bowel movement um, or even three to four days without having a bowel movement. And that's normal for them, but it's not normal in the fact that they don't feel good. They feel bloated. They feel nauseous. um, It disrupts their mood and everything else that they want to do in life. And and for that reason, we want to definitely make sure that we're helping you to move your bowels along. Now, why is this important? Why do we have to have regular bowel movements? Well, our, it's our body's way of excreting this, the stuff that we don't need. So basically it takes in what it needs, it, what foods that you eat, takes in all the nutrients, and then it gets rid of all the crud or crap, excuse me, that we don't need or the waste or anything that's not necessary for our body. You know, so you'll hear a lot of people, they'll do detoxes and juice cleanses and all that to help them get it all out, get all the toxins out, but your body is naturally doing that for you you know, our liver, our kidneys, our skin, our colon, everything. It's basically helping us to get rid of those toxins, quote unquote toxins. And it's really, it's just the stuff that our body doesn't need and it's putting it through our waste. So it is important to keep our system constantly going through. I'm going to get to why, you know, helping you with bowel movements is, is important and other reasons, but this is more for the focus of just feeling more comfortable. Like generally, yes, it's healthy for you, but If you just want to feel more comfortable, then you want to listen up. So before I talk about foods that make you poop, I want to talk about um, what are non-food ways. Um, So that way you're not wasting your, I mean, it's not a waste of time because we always want to focus on the diet, but maybe the diet's not the area that you need to improve. Maybe you need to start with other things first. So number one thing is water. If you're not drinking enough water, this stuff can't move. It can't go through. You got to push it through. So definitely make sure you're you're staying hydrated with water. And um, a great way to know if you're hydrated or not is looking at the color of your urine. I've, I've def, I probably have an episode about this, but in general, if your urine is dark, dark in color, it's almost like a dark yellow, you're not drinking enough water. We want it to be like a pale yellow or almost clear. Now we know you're fully hydrated. So if you're drinking enough water and still not having regular bowel movements, then come talk to me. All right, but if you're drinking enough water and it's not working out, um, other things that you could be doing, maybe you're not moving enough. Maybe you need to go for a walk or exercise. And if you're sitting a lot, then you're not allowing it to, you know, your bowel movements to go anywhere. So maybe just go for a walk um, and, you know, just do something. Go up and down stairs. Get get your body moving. Get it, get it going. If you're sitting a lot, it's going to just stay there. Um, Other things that you could be doing, maybe you're really stressed out, guys. The stomach is a muscle, and when we're stressed, our muscles tense up, right? So if you're tensing up, your stomach's tensing, it's not going to let go, and you're not going to have a bowel movement, okay? So 
practicing ways of managing your stress, which we've, you know, I speak about over and over again, is just so important for just general health. Um, But, you know, maybe a movement, I would say, like a good thing to think about, it may be doing something like yoga. Um, It's nice and gentle. You get some movement in there. It helps you to relieve stress, um, helps with breathing. And that might be something that if you know you're not someone who does a lot of exercise, that might be a nice kind of good way to kind of get into it. Um, and it should help with their move your bowels. Um, another thing, non-food related are supplements. Some people will take something like Metamucil or a fiber supplement. Um, maybe even, and I'm kind of jumping a little bit, but a probiotic supplement, you know, that will support the movement or support a healthy gut, um, and, but however, food is always going to be best, but if you're really, really stuck and, you know, it's nothing's happening, then taking a supplement to help move it out will be good. But as we know, that's really, that's not really getting down to the nip problem, which is probably what is, what food you're eating on a regular basis, which we want to focus on. So that brings me to the main topic and main discussion of today's topic, which are foods that make you poop. And the answer is any food that comes from the ground, so it's a plant-based food, it's going to have diet dietary fiber. So things like grains, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, um, beans, peas, those sort of foods are going to have fiber. Now there's going to be certain foods within those categories that have more fiber than others. And yes, there are different types of fiber. You know, there's soluble fiber, there's insoluble fiber, um, there's foods, fiber that provide, that build bulk. But to be honest, guys, all of them are important. So some might help support bowel movements more, but in general, fiber is really great for so many reasons. So yes, to help move bowels, which is what we're talking about today, but also consuming enough fiber is going to help pull cholesterol out of blood. It's going to help regulate blood sugars. It's going to prevent certain cancers, particularly colon cancer is a big one. Um, it is going to make you feel fuller for longer. So I've talked about this over and over again, you know, why whole wheat bread is better than white bread in the sense of even though whole wheat bread might have more calories, by having, you know, whole wheat bread, you actually feel fuller for longer versus when you're sitting at, you know, a restaurant at the at the dinner table and the white the white bread is on the table. And you eat a whole loaf of that and you're still hungry for your meal and you're just like, I don't understand. This didn't make me feel full, but I had an entire loaf of bread, right? So that's an example of why sometimes foods that are higher in fiber, although they might carry more calories, they actually help you to reduce your calorie intake later throughout the day, keeping you fuller for longer, helping you cut those cravings and making things like weight maintenance or weight loss more attainable. And so fiber is really, really important. Um, But in regards to bowel movements, the certain fibers that you want to focus on in the grain category are going to be lots of your your whole grains, things like oatmeal and barley. Those are great examples. Fruits and vegetables, uh, fruits that have the skin, things like pears and apples um, are really, really great for that. Vegetables that are what we call cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, those create a lot of bulk. Those are great. Um, nuts and seeds, things like chia seeds are great. You might want to put that in your cereal in the morning or in your smoothie or in your yogurt. Um, you know, swapping your snack, you know, maybe if you snack on chips, instead of snacking on chips, you have um, maybe a little bit of almonds or peanuts, like a quarter cup or, or so or whatever of that. That little swap will be helpful. Um, and then things like beans and, you know, doing like... Um, a chickpea salad or adding chickpeas to your salad or kidney beans in your soup, something like that, that could be really beneficial. Um, so now the question is how much is too much or how much is enough? And what I will say is if you're not someone who's currently eating a lot of plants, so you're not eating a lot of fruits or vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, beans, everything I just named, you want to slowly introduce it into your system. If you go too much too fast, you're going to feel really bloated. You might go to the, you might, it might really, really hurt and your system needs time to adjust. So slowly start to incorporate. I would say maybe if you're right now, you're using white bread switch to whole wheat bread um, or if you do something like um, cold cereal in the morning maybe do oatmeal instead add fiber that way or add some chia seeds to your yogurt but don't try to do all that in one day you know maybe make one swap add some water don't forget about the water as you increase fiber um, and then do something else each day and see if that helps. Now, here's the thing. If you do it for a short period of time, you'll have a normal bowel movement, but the second you stop eating those foods on a regular basis, 
you're likely to have the same problem again. So always keep in mind that th these are not just temporary changes, right? These are long-term changes. You want to create healthy habits around them. Um, in general, for females, if you are under the age of 50, you want to aim for about 25 grams of fiber per day. For males, if you're under the age of 50, you want to aim for about 38 grams of fiber a day. It really is more um, based on your calorie needs, so it's about 14 grams per 1,000 calories. It can get quite complicated, but honestly, um, if, you, if you're really, really serious and you really don't think you're eating enough and you really want to track, then a couple things you can do. You could you know, get an app like MyFitnessPal, download that. It has a way to help you when you input your food intake. It has a way to check how much fiber you're getting every day. If you want to send me a message, you're just not sure, you want to send me kind of like a basic rundown of what you eat. Um, I can help you to identify if you're eating enough fiber and how you can improve it. Um, but in general, you know, if you start to add more fiber and you start to have more normal bowel movements, then you're having enough fiber. Now, when are you having too much fiber? Um, if you're going more than two times a day, um, if your stool starts to get a little liquidy, and um, if you're finding that you can't get out of the toilet and you can't get off the toilet and you're constantly in there. Um, so... I, another thing I will say, though, um, when it comes to like feelings of constipation and urgency is if you keep finding that you are, you feel like you have to go to the bathroom, but nothing's actually coming out or when you do, it's like small little pebbles. That's really not great either. And so if anything that I'm describing sounds like you, my recommendation would be definitely go to a gastroenterologist, which is a stomach doctor. They specialize in this area. And there might be something else going on. Um, I can't diagnose you as a registered dietitian that's outside my scope. All I can really do is once you have a clear diagnosis, then help you to identify which foods might trigger those certain symptoms that you're experiencing. Um, so that's, that, that's something that I would say. A lot of people, believe it or not, have what's called irritable bowel syndrome, which is basically a definition of stomach problems that they can't really put an actual diagnosis on, believe it or not. Some people ha are lean towards the more constipation route. Some people go more towards the diarrhea route. And then other people are a mixture. It's what they call IBS-C, so a combination. I'm sorry, um, IBS-B? Oh, now, now I'm confusing it. One's constipation, one's diarrhea, and one is... Um, a combination of both of them. But regardless, if you're experiencing constipation, then this episode's for you. If you are experiencing diarrhea, um, then we're going to talk about another, uh, you're going to pretty much do all the opposite of what I'm telling you right now, um, which I feel like I should save for another podcast. Um, and if you have a combination of the two, then you want to listen to both and kind of um, basically eat foods rich in fiber when you're feeling like you can't go. And then when you're feeling like all you're doing is going, you want to go to foods that are lower in fiber. Um, there are other ways around healing irritable bowel. However, that gets a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit more one-to-one. -one, and that's when working with the dietitian on an individual basis is going to be a lot more beneficial than listening to these general guidelines. But with that being said, you know, that you're better off starting somewhere. Um, if anything I'm saying is kind of sparking some questions, you know you could always reach out to me. I'm easily available. I'm always answering questions um, in the private Facebook group that I have. Um, you can find the link in the bio for that on Instagram at Tips with Tony, or um, you can email me Tips with Tony at gmail.com. So I think that's about it for today. <laughs> I hope that you poop. If you want to send me a message with the emo the poop emoji, letting me know that this worked out for you, awesome. Really, really happy to help. If you have any other questions, reach out. And if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I am accepting applications to my six-month to food freedom coaching program. Within that program, we basically work on a one-on-one -on -one basis for six months, and I basically help you to develop a healthier relationship with food, um, educate you about your food choices so that you're motivated and you understand why you're doing it, um, and keep you accountable, coach you through, push you through those tough times where sometimes we feel like giving up on our nutrition, like quitting the gym and all of those things. Um, but I kind of make sure that I keep you on track so you don't fall off and another six months goes by and it's like, oh my gosh, how am I still here and not making any progress? So if this is something you're interested in, you want to go to the bio, um, 
in the show notes and fill, click on the application, fill that out. We will schedule a call um, and make sure that you're a good fit. I have an awesome video that I just put together um, to show you a little bit about my program so you know what you're getting yourself into before either of us commit to helping each other because it is a commitment at that. And then if I believe you're a good fit, I will invite you to the program at the end of the call. So that's kind of how that works. If you have any other questions, you know where to find me. Thank you so much for listening. As always, this is the Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time.